Good evening, Carpet Bangers. Welcome to Let's Talk Fishing. Yes, I'm in my studio, the Carpet Bangers Kitchen Studio. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a place we all feel comfortable in, isn't it? And we do our work and the way we do our preparations for fishing. And um, I just thought, let's just keep it real. It's a natural set setting for me in regarding. Uh, organising myself for when I get out there, basically. Um, not that I'm very good at doing it, to be fair. I keep bloody forgetting things, one thing or another. But anyway, I made an announcement uh, a number of days ago about packing in social media. And uh, to be fair, I was uh, pretty saddened in myself that it come to that point. Uh, unfortunately, it's been coming to that point in my mind for quite a while. Um, I just find that side of communicating with people pretty... Uh, it's not difficult, I know, to communicate. It's just, uh, just a case of... I don't feel as if I need to be competing with anybody in social media. My, my fishing and what I believe fishing should be all about is about sharing our experiences, talking about it, learning more things, not accepting what you've been told because not everything you've been told is correct in fishing. We've all got a different outlook. We've all got a different perspective. Um, we see different things. Um, I've met so many anglers in my life and heard so many stories and so many opinions and, and, I've, and I've sat back and listened and when I've sort of questioned it and explored it and then you come to realise that most of what people are talking about is basically repetitive of copying someone else's conversation or, um, you know, they've just got that little bit of experience but they don't fully understand that experience they've had. So for me, for me and my fishing, because I never held or knew all the answers, regarding what takes place. I'm like yourselves, a uh, bit of a quarter boy, if, to be honest, you know. You know, you, you want to learn fish, and I thought one of the best companies out there for sort of uh, bringing to anglers what was taking place in fishing was obviously corded with the underwater DVDs. For me, I thought they were amazing. Um, obviously, you can question certain things which have been said and done regarding them but it's just a case of how you take things on board for yourself how you evaluate them and uh, basically putting it into practice within your fishing and that's something i've always done i've always tried in my fishing to capture and um, bring and share with the, all the anglers out there uh, my experience and what I feel they might be interested in and obviously getting the right connection for for the right reasons, basically. Uh, obviously, I've been around a, a long time and uh, I'd like to think I've had a lot of experience and I'd like to think I have a slightly different way of thinking regarding how I see fishing and how I've presented fishing. Um, I've always kept it clean and I've always um, kept it real to be fair but unfortunately um, the social media side of fishing and um, the work you have to put in just become a little bit too demanding for me I was just putting uh, far too many hours in become a little bit popular and that was only thanks to all you carp bangers out there uh, basically no man's an island as they say for me it was just about keeping it real as I said um, sharing the love of fishing um, building a, a community of like-minded anglers and I'd like to think I've done that I'm very proud of doing that um, and obviously I'd like to see that continue uh, in an honest way because the bottom line is, is with the social media and how it's taking place. Uh, it's just getting a little bit out of hand and out of control and really need to be a little bit more, um, a 
bit more honest in my opinion because um, I don't think what everything I don't think everything which takes place in carp fishing is correct but that's just my opinion uh, and I'd like to think my opinion reflects a lot of anglers out there which support and believe in what I've tried to do um, what's the idea about uh, let's talk carp fishing the idea behind let's talk carp fishing for me was obviously want to explore and challenge myself in order to uh, basically see what was really going out there because obviously I've said it before, the perspective of carp fishing was always based on what you've been told or what's been presented to you and for me I don't think that's necessarily been the correct uh, way of putting things but um, it's been in my mind for a number of years now um, to try and explore a certain way of presenting and showing carp fishing uh, and as time has, go, has gone by certain things have come available where it allows uh, people like myself who are into videography and filmmaking and just taking nice footage um, to make beautiful films in my opinion you know there's no excuses for anybody to go out there and make a lovely video or you know um, have some memories to look back on with the families because at the end of the day time comes and goes in fishing you know somewhere along the line this carpet banger becomes history like everybody else and it'll be the new kid on the block for me I appreciate there's going to be new anglers coming through and they're going to have new personalities and they're going to have a new way of thinking but for me it's about teaching them people um, maybe a different way to sort of present themselves rather than the that battery's just gone rather than the media way of how everyone sort of wants to be the next bloody top angler you know what I'm saying when really fishing for me has always been about enjoying the moment the experience and um, and the challenge of trying to capture carp, carp basically so anyway what I'd like to do is is when I do my videos and I show you the videos, I don't really get to talk about the thinking behind the videos and what's taking place. Uh, I just present a video of how I've enjoyed myself and, and obviously high thing, highlight things. But certain things come my way I'd like to talk about. Unfortunately, I just don't feel Facebook and Instagram or Twitter gives you that opportunity to present yourself. So therefore, that's why I want to do videos, more videos like this, hopefully catches, capture beautiful footage, share it and hopefully talk, talk to you about it regarding, you know, the possibilities, the way to think, you know, or, you know, just open anglers' minds just to have a different way of thinking. Because for me, I think there's a lot of information out there that anglers would love to see, but haven't seen, which would just give them a slightly different thinking regarding how they can become better anglers within themselves. For me, that's a win-win for everybody. So what I'd like from you is obviously to support us and share what, we, what we're trying to put across. Because at the end of the day, everyone will benefit. I appreciate a, you know, I've, I've built up the Carpet Bangers clothing brand and the bait range and things like that. And it has a limited appeal because obviously I'm not spending loads of money and advertising and things like that for me i've always kept it real i've never put anyone under pressure to buy what i i do i've always believed in respecting people and for me it's just a case of oh, i'd like to share what i believe in yeah i'd like to sell what i believe in um there's not a lot of money in what we do uh, it helps renew batteries camera equipment uh, and I'm not being funny, it's just getting ex more and more expensive in order to try and capture the footage which I want to show you. So, as much as uh, 
the bait and the clothing gets sold, everything goes towards sort of renewing stuff like that, as well as supporting a charity, which is Katie Ski Tracks, which uh, I believe in and is a worthwhile charity to support, in my opinion. So everyone's a winner with me. There's no profit to be made in me. It's not about making a profit. It's really about getting value for everybody. And uh, basically, it's a win-win. That's the way I look at it. So uh, I hope you support what I'm trying to do. Hopefully it'll be more videos, plenty of magic moments, and um, I think it'll be... I think it'd be worth following and watching, to be fair, Carpet Bangers. So anyway, let's start this first episode regarding some footage I captured. I appreciate you watched a video I produced not so long ago uh, regarding why I changed the zigs. And um, I quite enjoyed making that, to be fair. And as for the feedback and the comments, I'm actually overwhelmed, to be fair, the amount of people who've got in touch with me. And I've really enjoyed what I've done, thought it was refreshing, and it was just a different way of sort of, you know, understanding things. Uh, and it's stuff like that I'd like to continue with, because I feel it'll just benefit everybody. Um, but anyway, getting back to a bit, a bit of footage I captured, um, for me, when we go fishing as anglers, we're pretty uniformed and, and sort of formatted to sort of think uh, f fishing works in a certain way because most of the time people work by what they see in front of them. And unfortunately, basically a lot of anglers are in, uh, limited with that information. Uh, so... For me, when it comes to being underwater, that is something that's always fascinated me, to, to be fair. It's fascinated me for years. Unfortunately, you've never been in a position to try and get to that level of capturing that footage. Um, and as I said, technology's moved on now. So in effect, I've obviously got to the stage where I can do it and present it to yourselves. Um, and. I've been doing it for a little bit now, and obviously I've been getting certain footage, which I think is just totally amazing. And I think it's worth talking to you about. So, um, basically, what I want to sort of discuss is explaining how things are working out regarding taking the footage, what I'm looking for, what I'm fascinated to try and see, what the difference is in lakes, how they present themselves, uh, hopefully to see carp feeding in you know in a in the way they do rather than having a fixed camera and obviously you're waiting for a week or so to sort of try and get the right shot and obviously it's presented the way it is for me when I go out fishing I'm really going out my fishing like usual no difference I go to a lake I pay me money I find a peg and I fish it the sad thing for me is the reality of it all what I have to do to try and create what I hope you enjoy, yeah? I have to sacrifice a lot of my own fishing, but to be fair, I'm happy to do that because my other passion is filmmaking and creating and trying to capture that footage, which I think is, for me, it's part of the magic of life, the magic of seeing what we don't normally see, hopefully seeing something different and um, yeah, I just think pff, that's something I'd like to just continue doing. So I need time to do that, uh, to be fair. So being on social media is not really gonna help me in that cause. But anyway, back to the point of the video. Um, oh no! How come to take the footage, carpet bangers? I just managed to see a swirl on the surface. I just thought it was an opportunity to get the camera out and see what was going on. So what I want you to understand is, is when you're in, when you're taking footage underneath the water, there's just a different dimension altogether. So I was looking for different things. I was like interested in how the light was interacting within the water layers. I was looking at the weed for holes in the weeds, whether you know carp are gonna sort of just sort of hiding there um, obviously uh, you're looking for naturals to see what you're up against regarding 
um, how you're going to present your bait or what tactics you feel you're going to need to do. Obviously, I didn't use any zigs because obviously there's just too much weed and it's not, not the appropriate way to be fishing, in my opinion. Um, so obviously, I've took the camera out. You'll see me trying to manoeuvre between the weed, uh, trying to see what's available to be seen, to be fair. Uh, we see some clear spots. We see a little bit of bait, which was uh, put out there by Peter. Uh, Peter had no fish for two days. I had no fish for two days because this first footage was taken on the last day, around about three o'clock, because I left around about four o'clock, to be fair. Um, and what was amazing about the footage was seeing uh, the bait. Peter turned around and said it wasn't his bait, but uh, obviously after further discussion, he was probably in agreement that it was probably his, it was his bait because he did use pellet. Um, and then what actually happens, carpet bang, is what you get to see as I'm swooping away from that particular spot, what comes into shot is a carp just basically suspended in midair, well, in the water layers around about three or four foot from the surface. And what was also interesting about it was the carp was sitting off the bait regarding the clear area. And so I was trying to work out in my mind what was the thinking in the carp, so to speak, because when you see fish slaps or swirls or things like that, what is the actual carp doing? Because I don't know the answer. We can only presume that something's going on, but we never know the definitive answer. So when I seen the carp there in midair, in suspense in the, the water layers, suspending in the water layers, so I should say, and Peter hadn't been caught for two days, I hadn't caught for two days, what triggers the carp to actually feed? How long had the carp actually been there? Because we did have carp in the area, carp headbangers, but it just sort of went where they showed a little bit and then it just went dead. Was, so with this carp being suspended in the water layer, how long did it actually been there? What was going to trigger, trigger for it to actually respond to? Wanting to take the bait, yeah? Because... I started thinking, when carp sees a baited area, obviously we're expecting that if it sees a baited area, it should just feed. Well, that's not the case because there's been many times footage has been taken where carp have seen bait and then they just bypass it and just go away. You know what I'm saying? But then I started thinking, well, it's the times where carp will see the bait and they do stay in the area, but we don't know that because we've never seen that type of footage. And they protect the area in relation to doing a fish slap or a show. I don't know. In order to warn off other predators. I don't know the full characteristics of what a carp does in a lake. We only see little glimpses and then presume that things are taking place because the history of carp fishing and what takes place in, in its environment is only fragmented in its documentation. So um, there's loads of thoughts you can apply to things, you know, when, you, when you're seeing all this like new footage now I'm trying to capture. So let me know what you think, carp bangers. Just post in the comments. Let's just chat together. Let's grow together. And, um, you know, we just might learn one a thing or two. So uh, in the meantime, enjoy, and um, I'll see you on episode two. Let's talk fishing. Bye for now, carpet bangers. Thanks for watching. See you all again. Bye.
how I need to get around it. Looking for the gaps. It's a bit difficult when you're underneath the water because obviously you've got to have a multi-dimension thought process in order to take all this information in and deal with what you're dealing with in relation to control and the camera. spot there. Just caught a little clear spot in the corner of my eye. I'm just going a bit deeper now. This clear spot carp headbangers was at the back of the weed so in effect you couldn't actually get it. You'd have to, your angle was at the side. So in effect I believe Peter was casting from his swim to the left. But if you were actually in that swim, in front of it, you wouldn't actually get to that particular clear spot. I like the idea, this, cl this clear spot's pretty, uh, pretty level, pretty flat. But there was clear spots which weren't as flat, but they were clear, but they were pretty bumpy. Regarding its, um, its form. The 
of difficulty when you're looking at the footage is obviously trying to capture and see what it actually you're looking at. So in effect, you do investigate stuff, and uh, obviously it could be nothing basically, but you've just got to look. I come to notice this clear patch. Hey, sorry, this little bit of bait. And as I pan to the left, magic more time carpet bangers. Oh, look at it, just sitting there. Oh, I was scuttered, I didn't get more of it. This footage, and that was it, carpet bangers. Unbelievable. So what thought process you want to apply to that particular bit of footage is anyone's guess. It's just a case of just trying to put pieces together and having an opinion. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, for me, it's uh, truly amazing to see. Uh, it's a pity the footage could have been a little bit more longer and a little bit more clearer, but unfortunately, you've got the conditions of the environment of the water quality of each and uh, every lake. So everything's always going to be different. Um, but what is amazing that it just gives you another insight uh, regarding what takes place or what could take place uh, underneath the surface of each lake. Um, give us another perspective of how to look at things. Um, please just Express your opinions in the comments of what you could think could possibly be happening. Uh, it's all about sharing thoughts and ideas, so put them in the comments box. Please just send us a comment or have an opinion and everyone can see and share it. Um, what I'll do is I'll also do a competition um, regarding uh, liking and sharing the video, Carpet Bangers. Put your names in the comments box as well as anything else you'd like to say. I'll put the names in, the, in a drawer and I'll pick a winner and I'll send a, a Carpet Bangers hoodie out. Um, at the end of the day, Carpet Bangers, everyone's a winner if they want to share and enjoy what I try and do. Um, at the end of the day, fishing's presented in a certain way. You get told what you're told. You see what you see, uh, so to speak. And um, for me... Um, I think there's a lot of anglers out there who just like to sort of get a better understanding uh, of what's actually taking place in car fishing or fishing for that matter. Um, so anyway, give us your support. <laughs> we need it. There's a big battle going on out there. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, let's look forward to uh, episode two. Eh? See you all soon. Bye for now. Thank you. And by the way, are you a carpet banger? <laughs>